at hotel and restaurant. I've never seen so many fucking managers, supervisors, head receptionists and sous chefs. I'm absolutely gobsmacked. In this week's nightmares, I check into a real-life faulty towers to find out. Thank you. God, it looks like something out of a porn movie. <laughs> I can't physically test everything within the kitchen or I'll end up like a, a big air balloon, I would have thought. <laughs> I've spoken to the uh, restaurant manager. Yes. I've spoken to the food and beverage manager. Yes. I'm and now I'm talking to, to the me. general manager. Fucking wake up, will you, yeah? Wake up! The Sandgate Hotel is perched on a gorgeous stretch of the Kent coast. It's 24 miles from France, but a million miles from being a good hotel and restaurant. The Sandgate Hotel. What a great spot. It's got 15 rooms and a coveted AA rosette for its food, and I'm checking in. First test of any hotel is the reception. Always a great sign of how it's run. Hello. Thank you. Sorry, you're on the phone? Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Is it urgent? No. I'll tell him that I'm going. Yeah. Tell him he's a customer. Sorry. Uh, see you. I'll see you in Tuesday. Ciao. Bye bye. Uh, uh, yeah, room number four. Thank you. Three years ago, Lois and Peter Hamilton Slade pulled their life savings and bought the Sandgate. At the moment, this place is losing around two grand a week. So Peter has had to keep his engineering job while Lois runs a hotel and restaurant. You've obviously yeah. run restaurants before? No. Uh, no. Never? Never. Never. Or small guest houses then? No. Never? Never. This Jeez. is our first, first effort. This is the restaurant. Oh, it's very small, isn't it? Yes. Huh? Very small. Lois has gone from selling perfume at Gatwick Airport to managing this small boutique hotel by the sea. And the food comes up through the stairs? No, it comes through here. OK. Dumb waiter. Yeah. Dumb waiter. A husband and wife team running a hotel and a dumb waiter. Don't worry. Azul! <laughs> From the restaurant, yeah, to the kitchen. Restaurant to the kitchen. And that must be a nightmare, no? It seems to work very well. Does it? Yeah. Extraordinarily, it's not just one restaurant. There's also a terrace barbecue, a bar, and Kent's first Japanese restaurant in the basement. It's a strange mix, but they do have one thing in common, no customers. How long can it survive? If we don't have a very good summer, or I don't think we'll get through the winter. And if the shit hits the fan and that doesn't take place and we have a crap summer, mm -hmm. um, what do you lose? Probably a quarter of a million. Hmm. Sometimes we've had comments that the food is inconsistent. I think that is a lot of the case when Stuart's not here. And Stuart's the head chef. head chef. The Japanese chef, where's he from? It's the same chef, Stuart. It's the same, same one. The same chef. We haven't got yeah. a Japanese chef. But you've got a Japanese restaurant? Yeah. Yes. Oh, hello, how are you? Very well, sir. And Stuart. Stuart, 38, from Northumberland. He's been here for six months. It's his first head chef's job, but since he's got here, he started hearing voices. What's that? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Right, you Thank you. Guys. Well, my little system of uh, communication. Is it like that all night? Yeah. How do you concentrate with that? Try and ignore it as much as possible. Fuck you now. It's not driving around the bend. Yeah. Is yeah, that all of the table nine? Table eight. Oh. Hello? Fuck me. Nine. Yeah. Hello? Can you fuck off and do some work? Four restaurants, 168 dishes, and one kitchen. Time to taste the food. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And there are the. The specials. The specials. Yes, and that's the a la carte. And the a la carte. Can I have a look at the Japanese menu as well, please? Of course you can. Thank you. Four in tonight, Saturday night for dinner. <laughs> Uh, sorry, just to let you know, we don't actually serve Japanese in this restaurant. Mm -hmm. just, just to let you know. Right, okay. Um, so I'll go downstairs to my staff and I'll come back here for the main course. 
Um, I need to see the, the, the fit for the beverage manager, see what I can do for you. Food but, beverage manager? Yes. Yeah, Dear, oh dear, oh dear. I mean, what a way of pissing customers off. Are you the yeah. food and beverage yeah. manager? And sorry, first name. Uh, Kevin. Kevin. So you really want me to go downstairs and have my sushi there? That's what I've been told by the general manager. And who's that? It's Kirsty. Kirsty. Let me have a word with Kirsty. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's extraordinary. I've spoken to the uh, restaurant manager. Yes. I've spoken to the food and beverage manager. Yes. I'm and now talking to the me. general manager. Um, have you ever watched Faulty Towns? Yes. Yeah. Hi, tell them Japanese start, though. We've got three managers, two waitresses, but only four customers. The numbers just don't add up. <laughs> the rice is hard. What a cock-up. But it's not the only one. Next, chicken from the a la carte menu. Thank you. God, it looks like something out of a porn movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's enough to make your eyes water. Excuse me, waitress, I'm missing my bollocks. Um, oh. <laughs> it doesn't taste the chicken. It tastes of tomato. It's like sun-dried tomatoes running through it. But they're so, so strong. Not for me. The Mackey Rolls. Who made them? I did. And how old are you? 18. 18. So you don't taste anything that this 18-year-old cook? I can't physically taste everything within the kitchen or I'll end up like a, a big air balloon, I would have thought. I like to... <laughs> I, I like, I like to, to obviously taste as much as I can. A head chef who doesn't taste his food is asking for trouble. I've never seen anyone cut it before. It's the only way to maintain control and keep up standards. Plenty of time. I think that the rice is underdone. Thank you. That's all. It's really important for yeah. you and I to obviously stay yeah. on the level. Like I say, you can you can see I'm not Japanese. Clearly. I'm not trying to uh, dig a hole and try and escape for for your sushi. That was uh, I've still got in my teeth. Stuart doesn't want to cook Japanese food. The people of Sange don't want to eat Japanese food. So why in the hell have they got a Japanese restaurant? This place doesn't know what it's doing, and that's clearly down to one thing, bad management. Lois has got more managers than the Ritz. But I can't work out who's running this place, okay. and I've got a sneaky so feeling a nice no one else can either. The business is in danger of closing. I don't think you actually know how dire the situation is. The amount of management and the amount of staff in such a small place I've never seen in my entire life. You know that. I've never been so confused with supervisors and managers and head receptionists. You're running this hotel like a 350 bedroom, five star deluxe. And the most important worry is no one seems to be controlling it. I've come up with an exercise to try and find out who is in charge. Drop this stone in the bucket of the person you think is in control of the Sandgate Hotel. The whole organisation. The whole organisation. Oh, dear. He's gone past all the managers and ignored oh. Lois. <laughs> OK. Next, Luca, the restaurant manager. Surely he must know. He just picked the head receptionist. Next up is Kevin, the food and beverage manager. Can you have more stones? Can you have more stones? Yeah, everybody yeah. should be running it. That's the point. Everybody should be running it? Yeah, it should be run as a group. That's what it's I'm business. trying to get through now. That's the problem. Everybody is running it, and there's no one controlling it. Okay. The voice from the top. Yep. Thank you. And you hit the nail on the head. That's what's exactly fucking happening. Everybody's trying to run it, and they're not doing their own jobs. So, interesting. We're all here now, and there's five of you that have got stones in your buckets. So, already there's a conflicting message. If this business is to survive, Lois needs to take command of it. 
She's got a few stones, but she's got no bollocks. If she doesn't grow a pair, the hotel is going to be washed up. The Sangay Hotel in Kent has lost £33,000 in the first four months of this year. But while Rome burns, Lois and Peter, the owners, seem determined to eat, drink and be merry. Meal after meal after meal. My brief when I started was it's run like Lois and Peter's living room. And that's how they wanted it. That's basically what I was told. What? Run it as if it's their lounge? Basically. Running a hotel and restaurant is not the same as eating and drinking in one. Lois and Peter bought a dream. Now they need to wake up to the fact that it's a business, not a second home. Day three at Sangate Towers, and a chance to see the terrace barbie. Fucking hell. Hardly a day for a fucking barbecue. I feel like I'm a fucking car boot sale. Stuart's worked in some good kitchens in his career, but they get him to set up a portable barbie. It's heartbreaking. You don't get any customers today. I will. Size of that fucking thing. Surely they can't make their head chef suffer anymore. Kitchen. <laughs> Kitchen, are you there? Are we all set? Uh, give us uh, oh four minutes on a bison garnish, please. <laughs> Where's that to, Calais? This place is like a jigsaw, but none of the pieces fit. Strange setup. So he's out there on the barbecue, and you're left to run the kitchen. Yeah. Fucking hell, you're 20 years of age, you're 18 years of age. I mean, how come you got all that responsibility? And what happens when it's busy? Yeah, shit. Who would put someone who's clearly a good chef in charge of a barbecue? Time to find out from the manager. But which one? Kirsty, right, the general manager, is Lois's daughter-in-law. Before coming to Britain, she worked in restaurants in her native New Zealand. The barbecue, how would you describe that? Um, my aim was for a Kiwi barbecue. And I thought that. <laughs> that sort of Salads. territorial Kiwi beach life. Something like that, um, yeah. But, sweetheart, we're not in fucking Auckland. I we're know. in Sandgate. The lack of focus in this place is astounding. Lois hasn't even got her flagship fine dining restaurant under control. The majority of the complaints that come through are normally on your day off. Have you ever eaten in the restaurant? No. Because if the complaints are going on when you're not here, you've got to see what they're serving in the dining room so you yeah. can really do something about it properly yeah. Yeah. and identify it. Are we too complicated? Is the menu too big? Are they inexperienced? Do we need to simplify it? What do, what do I need to do as a head chef? You're the food beverage manager. Have you ever eaten up here? No. How can you relate to your customer's experience if you're not experiencing the same time? Go upstairs, yep. order. Yep. I think you'll find something very interesting going on there. Yep. <laughs> Kirsty hasn't worked at the sharp end of the business for about eight months. So today, she's going to waitress. I don't know what's on and what's off, but I'm sure you do. Stuart's number two in the kitchen is 21-year-old Johnny. Hello? So what's going first, Johnny? Uh, I'm going to send this barbecue first, and then the starters. The bread's just gone up for the two, but I can't find anyone to take it out for the lift yet. Oh. Is it always like this? Yeah. Johnny runs the kitchen two days a week when Stuart's off. This is my chance to see how he copes. Come on, guys, that's ten minutes, so it's place to be there, yeah? We're fucking around with the garnish. They're a young yeah. team to be cooking such elaborate food. Yeah. And just to add to it, Johnny, they ordered it over one hour ago, yeah? Yeah. Let's get it out, guys, come on. I'm not going to allow you to send them. This is really important for you, you know that, from a professional point of view. Because you've got to go all the way up to the top in this fucking industry, not serving shit like that, big boy. No. And all you're doing by serving that shit is... No, nearly. Hey, destroying the place. And that's just on a fucking burger. And I know you can do better than that, you know that? I know I can do better. There you go, so fucking do it. Yeah. There are only nine customers in for lunch. But it's well over an hour before Stuart and Kevin get their mains. Unfortunately, Kevin and Stuart aren't the only unhappy customers. Johnny, table nine have popped off. They've gone. That's the table that had no starters, went straight to the main courses. Where's the ticket gone? In the bin. 
Why have you put it in the bin? I didn't, but that's where it's ended up. Fucking wake up, will you, yeah? Wake up! This is one of the worst lunch services I've ever seen. Johnny's tried his best, but the real culprit is clear. It's Stuart's food. It's just far too complicated. Certainly been educational, to say the least. Stuart's had a shock upstairs too. I never thought I would be so, so on bar. I actually walked out. You walked out? Yeah. Fucking hell, why did you walk out? Because I've seen someone else eating my desserts that I'd been waiting for 35 minutes. A head chef walking out of his own restaurant. This place has sunk about as low as it can go. Morning. How are you? Stuart's seen firsthand what's wrong upstairs. I think the best people to tell him what's wrong downstairs are his own brigade. But I think the young chefs like this soft-hearted Geordie so much, they've been too afraid to pipe up in case they hurt his feelings. It's time they told their boss a few home truths. So whoever catches the bass today, as you catch that bass, you turn around openly and tell Stuart something. You've got a lot to say, haven't you? What happens if I catch you one? Well, <laughs> who, who, who can I cry to? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking me, big boy. <laughs> Here we go. Come on. Here comes, here Come on, the daddy. The bass. Oh, ho, ho. Oh, Round of applause. Whee. More important, what you got to say? All right, Stu. Quickly, because Luke's in. You've got lovely when you but There's too much of it. Thank you. Oh, well, done, Luke. Time to Wait. Well. well done, Luke. What have you got to tell Chef? I just think that the menu's nice and that. There's just, I think there's too many garnishes, really, for the dishes. No problem. Thanks for telling us. That's, that's all it is, really. At 38, Stuart's old to have just got his first head chef's job. Well and done, I think he's desperate to impress. If we simplify it, I think we can get the taste a lot better and we can get the stuff looking so much better instead of having to try and rush it out all the time. I just don't like the service being manic because I know that I can do better myself and I know the rest of us can. Yeah. Great. They're starting to enjoy themselves. Team spirit's vital to a good kitchen. Nice one, huh? Nice one. Yes. Yeah. Well done, Johnny. Two of the biggest fish so far. <laughs> the only one pissed off is me. Four hours on the English Channel and I didn't catch a thing. Sangate is twinned with Songat, a French town 24 miles across the Channel. But instead of seeking inspiration from France, Lois and Kersey have got the chefs cooking food from New Zealand and Japan, 6,000 miles away. My plan right. is to bring them home. See, Bass, you're not going to get any better, any fresher quality ingredients than that. It's on your doorstep. And that's what I want you to take advantage of. Stuart sea bass dish on the a la carte menu has 15 ingredients, which is why the boys struggle so much with it. I'm going to show them the simpler version with just five ingredients. And then just let the knife do the work. In. Back on the stove. I think what I'm trying to do is just show you how easy it can, but one person can do this, narrow down the complexity of it, and it can be done within three or four minutes. You know that? Yeah? See, Bass? And the dishes can be just as exciting with less on there because we're concentrating on the sea bass being hot, the dish being less complex, and flavour. Lois has been guilty of putting unrealistic demands on Stuart. No chef with a small team can cook 168 dishes really well. We've got to convince her and Peter that less is more. The sea bass has won them over, but there's bad news. We sadly had a letter this morning to say that we've lost our AA rosette. Yeah. Have you got the letter with you? I have. Sorry. It was for the food guide. Right. One AA rosette is awarded for food cooked with care and skill. But forced to cook for four restaurants, Stuart has slipped below that standard. It's a kick in the bollocks mm. for any chef. There's no two ways about that. But in a way, it's a clean start. We 
turn the page, we make it less complex, and we go again. We haven't got long to turn this place around, and I'm worried. I don't know if the big friendly giant will be able to pick himself up from this one. Some bad news, mate. Just lost the rosette. Where's that? It's gone. They've taken it away. I'm gutted. What can we do? It's a kick in the teeth. It's a, it's a bullet to the heart. If Lois isn't careful, it won't just be Stuart's professional pride down the pan. Less is more on the plate and in the hotel. We need to simplify everything so what's left can sparkle. The weakest link is the Japanese restaurant. How's it going? Segoi. Up and down. Up and down. It's costing more to staff than it's making. Last week, it took just £290. Um, I'm personally worried about it. Mm -hmm. um, what about you? Uh, uh, too fair. Uh -huh. I think we're in love with the idea mm. more than we are with the success of the business. Mm -hmm. And my idea is to close it mm -hmm. and to stop hemorrhaging money. What would you suggest we did with it? Here, mm. I think you've got a perfect room for a private dining, right. um, an overspill from the restaurant. That's a good idea. It's a fantastic idea. And I think whether he's got the bollocks to tell you or not, I'm going to tell you. Mm. He's not very comfortable cooking it. Mm. He's not a fucking Japanese chef. He's a Geordie. I put the food back on the road to recovery and got rid of that stupid Japanese. But front of house is still a shambles. Hello, when, when did you book? Uh, when we arrived this evening. Oh, OK, no problems. Right, I do have some space for you. OK, but I don't have you on my list. I'm sorry. Sorting okay. out the chaotic customer service is too much okay, even for me. Would you like to take a seat? Basil thought he wouldn't like it, but what this place needs is a Frenchman. Come here. Am I happy to see uh -huh. you? Are you well? I'm very well. Yeah, I'd like to introduce you to Jean Baptiste. Yeah, He's um, my major lead from Claridge's. Jean Baptiste is in charge of 70 waiters. If there's anyone who can help Lois organise the restaurant, it's him. Um, right, so let's have a look at the um, dumb waiters. He'll take control upstairs yeah. while I help Stuart keep things ship shaped downstairs. Where the food comes up yep. from the kitchen and to the restaurant. So the customer's going to hear the waitresses talking, the restaurant manager talking, and the buzzer also sort of, there you go, goes right through the dining room. That's it. There you go. That, <laughs> when the first, or any of the call... Within yeah, minutes of arriving, Jean-Baptiste bans the intercom system. From now on, the waiters will have to go downstairs and talk to the chefs face to face. Would you like to come through? Hello, good afternoon. How are you? Even the basics aren't looked after here. Luca, the restaurant manager, hasn't got enough cold water for lunch. Yeah, because you're going to run out of water very quickly, my friend. This huh? uh, uh, you got two bottles of water. Yeah, but what I would do, I would give him tumblers with ice and lemon. <coughs> and what about if you don't want any ice and lemon? They're too warm. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah, unfortunately. Fucking disgrace, you know? unfortunately. How are you going to do that? Hey, look at, look at those glasses. They're, they're fucking dirty. Look at that. Hey, this is what we need to change, Luca. It's, 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 we have to be customer orientated, okay? Front of house have had absolutely no leadership or quality control from Lois. Well, of course, prefer that I take the menu. You are the owner, okay? Hmm? You got a restaurant manager. Got some waiter to bring the menu. Okay? Why While you're here, you're here to be here. Facing the customers, mm. welcome, them, okay? Mm. Welcome home, you know? Oh, this is exactly what no, I wanted to but do. Welcome home. First check is in. You're all right. Not too hard. Clear face to face communication like this should cut out all the wrong orders and misunderstandings. Okay, that wasn't difficult, was it? Excellent. What's it like having the things in the kitchen now, in your hands? On control. You're feeling control. Yeah. I spend a little yep. bit more time cooking with the one I've left now. That's fucking banned, guys. Look, hello. Yeah? No one touches that fucking thing. Okay? You need to pick up the bread and the butter now. So who's going to do it if not? Kevin. Who's going to do it? Uh, Him? Yeah, so we customer, customer, customer. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You're walking here. So what do you mean you're walking here? The stuff is coming in like that? 
a member of staff ignoring Lois and heading for the bar, and she hasn't batted an eyelid. What's going on? You're the fucking owner. He didn't even say hello to you. Can you believe that? No. It's, 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 it's a fucking nightmare. It's a, it's, a, it's a bad organization. It's a lack of communication, a lack of uh, team team spirit, team leader. It's, uh -huh. Nobody knows what they're doing. Um, the, uh, the, the the waiter is managing the the owner. The owner is, doesn't know what she's doing. Uh -huh. um, it's it's a fucking mess. It's a yeah. mess. Jean Baptiste has helped reorganize the restaurant, but he's also uncovered the ultimate symptom of everything that's wrong with Lois's business. Staff are allowed to drink on the premises. I need to get to the bottom of this. They spend a lot of money in. They spend at the over bar. two thousand pounds a month in the bar. Two thousand pounds a month. Mm. Fuck me. Mm. Five hundred quid a week on staff drinks. That's what they spend. Have you become dependent on that? Possibly. I guess to a degree. We sat down and looked at you know how much we were earning off of them at the end of the day. You know, it reduces the salary bill. It's even worse than I thought. Because how on earth are you going to get the message across when you're treading on eggshells to not upset them because they're going to be spending £2,000 a month in the bar? Fucking hell. I've never heard anything so pathetic in all my life. Everyone's taking the piss. And maybe there is an advantage having too many staff because they're spending £2,000 a month in the fucking bar drinking. And clearly, that's keeping the business afloat. The Sangay Hotel in Kent is in serious trouble. It's got a great location and a great chef. But an owner who hasn't got a clue how to run a business, I'm in the midst of trying to rescue it. Fucking wake up, will you, yeah? Wake up! In just two days' time, we're relaunching the restaurant with a French flavour. We're holding an oyster eating competition against a French team from Songaz. But I've discovered that owner Lois and her manager Kirsty are getting the basics wrong. They allow their staff to use the bar as a common room, which is a surefire way to drive your customers away. It is our fault. We have done it wrong. I do. I can absolutely see it that we have done it wrong because it's building up, it's getting more and more familiar. There are more and more drinking going, and sometimes people, there's so many staff here, the customers can't get to the bar. The staff are spending over 24 grand a year on booze and fags, but I'm putting a stop to it now. Once you've finished your shift, I'm afraid you cannot come and sit in the bar and drink. Now, that has huge implications in this company. I think you all know that. That is massive. This business is not run for staff, and the owners are no longer going to depend on you guys putting money in behind the bar. And secondly, you've got no idea of the conflicting messages it's sending to the customers. And you can't serve a member of the public and then go and sit in the same bar and drink with them. It's not good. Never seen it in my entire life, and it's got to stop. This is not a drinking hole. This is not a socialising gaff. Can I just ask whether, when you set staff out to drink, does that mean their day's off as well? Why does anyone want to come here on their day off? Let me tell you why. Because it's too fucking easy. Let's go down the sand gate. Let's sit there and get bladdered. Let's sit on the terrace. Let's sit. It's too comfy. Haven't you got homes to go to? It's just become too convenient. I think we can all agree that. Then when there's arses to be kicked the next day and disciplinary to take place, no one wants to listen to the owners or Kirsty because we've sort of had a chat and had a drink over it and nothing's got done. If this place has got any hope of surviving, and going from strength to strength to identify the customers are more important than the staff, that has to stop. Cheers. Let's get back to work. Yeah. We're going to have to be very careful as well because, you know, there is a tendency to come in here and, you know, Lars and Peter meet up in here at the end of the day and, you know, have a drink together. We, I guess to a degree we're going to have to lead by example. At last, someone's talking about leading. It's not Lois, but I think we're getting somewhere. I'm going to have to have a cigarette, man. Huh? But I'm still worried about Stuart. Since he lost the AA rose there, his morale has hit rock bottom. To have any chance of pulling off the relaunch, I need the Geordie giant back from the dark side. Regarding the accolade, you know, fucking get it back you know, and, and, and get it back properly without trying to cook 168 dishes. Yep. Get it back cooking a menu that you can control. Why do you shout so much? 
I'm going to help him devise a new menu that's right for a seaside hotel, focusing on fresh fish with a French twist. If I came to sit in the bar, or even sit in the restaurant here, I'd love a bowl of milk for it here. Yeah. I'd love a platter for the mayor. Yeah. I'd die for it. Do you know why? Because yeah. I can relate to the food, because there's the fucking sea. Oh, it's ideal, like you say. I mean, oh, you know, and, and, and price-wise as well, yeah. uh, ideally located to, to buy fresh fish for basically next to nothing. and wait and see this whole kitchen just waft with a smell of bully base. Yeah. yeah. The frogs will be swimming across that channel to get in here. Yeah? What about uh, a nice, big, sumptuous, rich pear yeah. tatan. Pears from Kent bring yeah. a little bit of fucking England meets France, France meets yeah. England. Yeah. Yeah. Where's the sugar? There. Oh, right. Oh, Johnny. Just smell that there, the cardamom seeds. That's lovely. OK. Mm. As well as a new menu, we also need new customers. So, Saga. The biggest yeah. employer in town, with nearly a thousand workers just around the corner okay. from the restaurant, is Saga. Look, sort of Armed with two dozen oysters, we've come to turn them on to fresh seafood. Okay, here we go. Mm. They're very nice, yeah, delicious. Anything happening downstairs? <laughs> no, you tell me you're feeling yeah. sort of warm and yeah. sexy. <laughs> All the produce is local fish that you can mm. see from the Sangia to the hotel. The same it's with gorgeous. the oysters, Plat the same with the crab. That's beautiful. Oh, chips. It's good to start talking about the other things on the menu. Yeah. The idea of just getting them to sort of up to speed with the oysters is for you then to sort of let them know about everything else going on. Yeah. yeah. It's essential the restaurant attracts locals who are still around when the tourists go home. These are the people who will keep the business afloat in the winter. Can I ask a question? Okay. How's your sex life? Wonderful. Perfect. <laughs> Let me get you some oysters. <laughs> Straight down. That's it. Nice? Lovely. And there's an added Sounds bonus fun. for you. <laughs> We've got the most amazing bedrooms upstairs if things are going to plan. <laughs> Word of mouth? is the best publicity you can get in the restaurant trade. And hopefully, we've just set a thousand tongues wagging. Right. Tuna, small or large? It's on the menu is two is sizes. Right. Two but prices. Lois's front of house team are still flapping. She treats them like her extended family and seems afraid to discipline them. It's got to change. And I've been racking my brains out all fucking week on how Lois can get really strong with her staff. And I've got a little idea. Keep on running. Keep on hiding. Yeah. Yeah, just one of them, one of them. Good morning, yeah. 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 No, that's going to be terrible. Oh, you greasy fucker. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 Assertiveness training, chef style. Really tell him exactly what you think of him. Luca. I think you're an extremely nice person, and you're an asset to the place. Oh, dear. She's more like mum than matron. Like I own it. You have got to have respect for me, and I don't think you have. Yeah. I think with him, you've got to get really to the point. So I'm not going to put that there. Mm. Luca, every time I want something, you do it. Do as you're told, or look for a new fucking job. Mm. All right. Now. You don't have to say fuck it. It's a chef's thing. Mm. Fire away. Luca, it's time that you learnt. Mm -hmm. I cannot put up with you interrupting me all the time and not doing what I ask you. Mm -hmm. You work for me, I do not work for you. Good. Much better. Chef, every time I speak to you, you interrupt me. It's absolutely gobsmacking mm -hmm. and it's incredibly bad manners. Kevin, you'll come steaming in and interrupt and start talking over the top of me. Do not do it. Now we're getting somewhere. I need respect from everybody. Listen to what I'm telling you, and for Christ's sake, get on with it. Good. Do you feel any better? Yeah, it's lovely, isn't it? Do you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now I want you to do it for real. Yep. Yeah. The real um, thing. The real thing. We have a quick word with Luca. Yeah. Tell him what you want. Tell him okay. what you need, and uh, tell him how important this is to you. Yes. And how he does his job. Yes. Yeah. Do you want me to do it for you? No. Let's go. Oh, Absolutely. Whoever you wish. When I said to you last night that Cynthia was to do the ladies' 
in the bar, immediately you said to me, Cynthia mustn't do the ladies in the bar. If it's like me and Kevin coordinating the function, then you come in breaking in with other instructions. It's going to be too many people in. giving instructions. That's what I'm here to do. I have to control it, Luca. Is Basically, that... in a nutshell, just do as she says. Sure. And if you've got an issue with it, talk to her no, after sure. service. Yeah. We're in the middle of service. Do as she says. Yeah. Okay. I must, must be heard and taken notice of. Okay. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Nice one. Thank you. Lois has finally discovered her inner chef, and not a moment too soon. Do as I say. End the story. In a few hours' time, we relaunch the restaurant. And this menu, yeah, is clear, straightforward. It can be eaten in the restaurant, it can be eaten on the terrace, and it can be eaten in the bar. 60 of the area's most influential people are coming for lunch. So the chefs will need to pull together like a team. I've got here, for you guys, the most amazing jackets. Spotless. Guess what we're going to do before we put those jackets on? Oh, no. Go on. Oh, we're going in the sea. We're going in the sea, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to have a quick dip before lunch. Oh, Who's up for it? <laughs> Come on, oh, you can all do in a fucking shower. <laughs> With great seafood on the menu, the first to arrive, oh, yeah. naturally enough, yeah, are the French. You. Welcome to the Sandgate Hotel. <laughs> this is the team that the chefs are taking on in the oyster shucking competition after lunch, and it looks like they've all been in training. So this is the patron, sorry, Louis, excuse me. Enchanté. One tuna, large portion. Yeah, yeah chef. Yeah. One cup of van. Yeah. With the first orders in, the kitchen swings into action. That looks beautiful, that. Very nice. It's all in the hat, yeah? Good man. What a transformation from a week ago. The food's simple, the chefs yeah. are calm, collected and working as a team. <laughs> but for Lois and her waiters upstairs, it's a different story. <laughs> it's going pear-shaped. I've never seen them so far in the shit upstairs, you know that? All my guys have came in early. They're a crack of dawn. We had time to go for a swim. <laughs> We had time to go for a swim before service. But I tell you what, I, tell, I know who's swimming now. <laughs> huh? I think they're about to sink. <laughs> whoop, whoop, whoop. I need to find out what's happening and stop the rot. <laughs> Another wrong order means more work for the chefs. Yeah, we've got to cook the salmon again, though, haven't we? Yeah, but yeah. one. It's only a table, table two. If this is a table of six, I can understand. But what, one table of two is ordered wrong, big boy. Come on. And it was the noise. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Oh, come on. Oh, fuck it. Is it? Glass everywhere. Let me just start the table again. And to top it all, the general manager is having a drink on the terrace. And Lois hasn't stopped her. What is going on? It's 1.30 coming up. Um, just out of interest, why can't Kirsty jump in and give us a hand on such a big day? No disrespect, but having drinks with her mates. You know, a day like today, what kind of message is that serving? Kirsty, can you help out? No one's taking care of the terrace. One table's already left because they wouldn't have their order taken. We just need general help. Yeah? I'll just find out from last where she wants me. It's an absolute and nightmare. And these poor men out here still waiting for their main course. Yeah. I'd go and chase that one. Everyone should be hands on fucking deck now, you know that? Yeah. A week ago, it was pandemonium down here and fuck all happening upstairs. Now, it's pandemonium upstairs and everything happening here, you know that? Two oysters natural, one oyster deep fried, two prawns. Lois is finally getting control front of house. She's cracking the whip with her staff and getting them working like a team. For the first time in a week, the customer's been put first. Formidable. It's absolutely formidable. What an improvement. Santé. Sangat Sandgate. 
it's very nice to see more fish on the menu, particularly as we're near to the sea. I'm enjoying it very, very much. I love all my here on both sides of the channel. <laughs> that is only what is left because, come on, being French, we have tuck out of it. I feel like a millionaire. <laughs> Stuart and the chefs have pulled it off. Thanks to these guys as well. Now they face the French team in the oyster eating competition. Special events that get the restaurant noticed and talked about are a great way to bring in more custom. Welcome to the first ever Sandgate versus Songas oyster shopping competition. Oh! Hey! Which, within five minutes, you're going to have to open and eat as many oysters as possible. Go! If Lois and Peter can make this an annual competition, it will help improve Anglo-French relations and do their restaurant a power of good into the bargain. One minute to go! Three, two, one, stop! 28 for the French! Excuse me, please, and Peter, for the Sungate English, I'm how many, please? I'm afraid we only did 76. 76! Well done, Sungate. Thank you. OK, Stuart. <laughs> Jesus, she's trying to drag me back to France. Today's been a great launch pad for the restaurant. Now it's up to Lois to take the place forward and run it like a business, not like her living room. Stay on top of them, yeah? I saw it a week ago thinking, God, you know, you may own the place, but you're not running it. Yeah. You've got to run it and own it. Mm. It's a big difference. Yeah, Yeah, and don't fall in love with it, because it's a job. Quiet. Yeah, you've got to keep at them, and on them, and at them, and on them, and at them. But for my money, Stuart's the hero. When he lost his rosette earlier this week, I thought I'd lost him. But all credit to him, he's pulled it round. You deserve to make it yours. Yeah. Stick to what you know yeah. you can do properly yeah. and stand firm on that one. Yeah. Hey, you still look like Jimmy now. <laughs> um, Was it the nose or the accent? Or... The accent. The accent. Can you sing? Yeah, yeah. Give us a song. Wild beer and spirit <laughs> all the time. They've got six weeks until I come back. I hope they're still singing then. Still she's always on my mind. At the beginning of the summer, I spent a week at the Sangay Hotel. God, it looks like something out of a porn movie. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't work out if it was a comedy or a tragedy. Oh, four minutes on a bison garnish, please. I simplified the food, got the owner to run the place like a business. I must, must be heard and <laughs> taken notice of. And made a splash at the relaunch. Six weeks later, I'm back. Good morning. How are you? Thank you. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Lois at the helm. Hi, That's a good sign. Hello, Gordon. Are you well? I am well, thanks. Yes. yes. Here's one I caught earlier. <laughs> Present for Stuart. Uh, good to see you both. Very I'm nice. sure you'll be delighted. Um, is he downstairs? <laughs> yep, he is. What do you mean, fucking hell? That's not oh, a nice good. reception. Oh, Very good. well, thank you. How are you? Very well. Huh? How are you? Yeah, good. We put that in the fridge and we'll have, a, uh, we'll have a chat about that later. The last time I was here, the staff was spending two grand a month in the bar. And before I banned it, Stuart was one of the worst offenders. What have you been spending your money on per month that you're not spending upstairs in the bar? Decided to go out there and have a little beer, be man. No. Yeah. That's fantastic news. Yeah. So being spared in <laughs> too much time at home. <laughs> See what happens? Huh? That's great news. In the kitchen, he's got a new system to tell right. the waiters upstairs uh, when the food is ready. It's explain, a, it's, explain it to me. It's a vibrating system. A vibrating system. So if it's uh, waiter number one, yeah. we'll then press the number one button. Gives them a little tickle. All the waiters are working with vibrators. Fucking hell. No. That's fantastic. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, and any waitresses need more sort of jigs than any of that? 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, if they don't, if it doesn't come out, I just give them all a tickle. Like <laughs> <laughs> one thing very interesting yeah. is that um, the customers that come now yes. are not the people that we had before. They're totally different. It's been an amazingly Which is great good news. week. Yeah, uh, really fantastic. It's great to see Lois and Peter moving the business forward with new customers and new ideas. Um, We've had the till moved from downstairs when we closed. When, when you were here, when we closed down, we had someone do all the rewiring and put this good. till in here. But crucially, how's the new menu doing? I don't know if the boys told you, but on Friday we sold out of seafood. 40 covers on Tuesday and 50 covers on Wednesday, so... Mm -hmm. um, you know, selling out of seafood... You know, we never used to do that. Can the business survive? If it continues going on like this now, yes. Since I was last here, turnover has nearly doubled to 14 and a half grand a week. So they must be getting something right. Good. Ooh. Time to find out for myself. Can I have a look at the um, bar, menu? bar menu? But I'm not going in there to be. Oh, no, you can eat in here. It's fine. Oh. Wow, well, that's great. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Good. Yeah, big breakthrough. Christ. Am I in the same place I was a month ago? And Lois is outside um, as a host, checking customers coming through, um, arranging the table plan and um, almost slightly, slightly looking concerned, which um, I like to see her worried. That means she's moving her ass. I think it's going much better. It's much calmer. The whole system is working. The first time he came to ETR, he was, he was chewing on raw sushi rice. I want to see if the big bad Geordie has regained his passion for food. So I've challenged him to cook me something special with my sea bass. It's all right. <laughs> well, it's more successful than the last day. No, just the face. Let me ask you a question first. Yeah, of course. Um, what did you think of the sea bass? Well, I thought it was following along the themes. Uh, straightforward, not complicating the flavours. I yep. think if I was to have that dish on the menu, uh, I think it would probably fly out the door. I thought the dish was um, absolutely fantastic. Yeah? I really enjoyed it. Excellent. Um, and that's the best dish I've eaten at the Sangay Hotel since I've been here. <laughs> Next time I see you, yeah. you can have a baby girl or a baby boy. Uh, you, know, you know what it is? Go on. You know that day where I had that oyster eating contest? Yes. I mean, yeah. <laughs> that was nice, was it? I think it might have been like. That sea bass was memorable. What more could you ask? I don't tell him. I didn't really catch it. I bought it from the fucking fishmonger. <laughs> Next on 4, those nurses are back with a new series and temptation is never far away in No Angels. Uh, then at 5 past 11, Frank and Sheila have a shameless house guest with a voracious sexual appetite. <laughs>